confronto contra a NRG vai ser um rival muito difícil. Realmente tem jogadores de categoria mundial, né? Eles ganharam já Champions, tem jogadores que são muito bons nos gols. Tem jogadores que não conseguiram demonstrar tudo o que era para demonstrar na, no kickoff e agora tenho certeza que vai ser, vai ser muito difícil jogar contra eles. I think Loud's biggest threat to us is probably not aggression, but just being relentless in the server. You know, they've had really big comebacks. They're never out, no matter how far down they are. É um 4 contra 2, já que foi o primeiro. Kawazin, Kawan de novo. Vai Kawan, fez metade. Kawazin, é na tua, Kawan! Sempre é para jogar com o coração. Nunca, nunca se sabe o que vai acontecer no dia do jogo. Então, sim, dá para ganhar. Well, if you thought that last match was something else, get ready for this one because it's going to be a fantastic brawl between two stupendous teams. Welcome back, everyone, to VCT Americas. Golden Bull here alongside with Bula. You got Mimi, you got Beginner, and we are... Who's <laughs> Bula? Bula? That's my new name for you. Bula. You're just Bula. <laughs> but I said her name right, though. Nail yeah. that one. Good oh, job. you're not bullying her. You've only known her. Not at all. Not at all. I've moved, I've moved the, the goalpost forward. All right, folks. Careful. I'm right here, Doug. <laughs> we have our second match of the day, <laughs> and it's going to be a good one. We have a, a continuing chapter in the saga of Loud versus N. RG. Now let's go ahead, though, and talk about Loud, of course, defending uh, champions of the Americas region. Also got themselves a couple world champs in that lineup as well. And this is a team that went into Masters Madrid. I think people were pretty high up on them, as you are for Loud all the time, because they never miss these global events. Uh, but this time around, it was definitely, um, even though it was good, what we were seeing from Loud. Uh, Mimi, I think you were there. It just felt as if... You think, you think so? You were <laughs> You're losing your memory. You were there with me. No, no, no I, I'm It's a question. Anyway, the point I'm trying to say here, the point I'm trying to say here is that it felt like Loud had that that magic essence, and then as we got closer into the playoffs, it just started to fade away a little, little by little. I mean, I think it's really tough to assess Loud from that event because they sure. went in, they beat two teams. FPX and EDG, neither of whom I think looked particularly great That's at fair. that That's event. Fair. They go into playoffs and they lose two close matches, but I think looked, honestly, I think they looked better in playoffs than they did in the group stages compared really? to the level of opponent that they were playing, okay. even though they lost. That's when we saw QCK getting online. That's when we saw them, I think, really starting to tone in when they're playing the weirder comps, the newer stuff, and when they're playing the more standard stuff. I don't think this is allowed, though, that is in the like highest championship form we've seen from them in the past, but I think they grew a lot throughout their run at Madrid, and that's what matters early in the season. Yeah, I, I think that uh, that assessment is pretty, pretty much correct. I, I, I think that first series at Madrid was a real, like, kind of scary moment for yeah. me where I was like, oh, Loud is not going to be as consistent, as firm as they are going to be, uh, you know, in the years prior. But um, I think they needed that experience at Madrid, and they still played deep, right? They still got to playoffs. They yeah, still, like, they were still and kind I mean, of wow. close well against to Sentinels, close yeah. game to Paper X. Yeah, like, exactly. It, it was a very respectable run. And, and this team needs to be able to figure out how deep they can actually go. Sure. And I think it is pretty deep. Um, without Aspas on this lineup, I think that's somewhere where you still have to kind of build up that confidence. Are we that championship team anymore? Are we the team that's going to be able to dominate Americas? And I think the answer is yes, but it's going to take some work. I think the thing I find interesting about Loud is that there's not a hero on the team anymore, right? So you don't have the people who look to like an Aspas that's like, you have to perform incredibly every game, you know? And the comps they play aren't really built around that either. That's I think you're yeah. going to find inconsistency in the sense of different players are going to show up map to map, day to day, or whatnot, because it's not about setting up your dive agent to go in, go nuts, and find a lot of kills. They're setting up multiple different players to take those opening fights and changing it very yeah. flexibly throughout the games, uh, which I think is very unique in Valorant when everyone, for the most part, is playing Sentinels, playing a dive agent, and sort of playing strong side, weak side, especially on defense. Uh, I think their style of play is very different. And we also need to learn a little bit as we watch them play the game, too, because I think performances are going to vary. Yeah, game. yeah. Well, we're going to learn when we watch him, but let's go ahead and learn a little bit more from the man himself. We've got Smith standing by with Sadak to get a brief look at what we should be expecting in this matchup. Hey, Sadak, great to see you. Great to see you. Uh, I know that you've had a couple, a little bit of downtime after Madrid. What are the, the team's biggest learnings and takeaways from that event? Uh, I think for us, it's that we have what it takes to win. We just need to adjust some things, but overall, like we have what it takes for sure. Amazing. We're all looking forward to seeing it. Best of luck today. Thank you. Thank you. 
And that is no question. We always know that Loud, the team, have what it takes to be able to pull off these wins here today. Uh, but it is going to be a lot more challenging, as we had mentioned, because they lost that key piece in Aspas. And now they're, they, they've been building it up. But to Mimi's point, right, QCK definitely found himself there. Where else can this team, like, lean to to really find that success? Yeah, I, I think just the individual level of every single player is insane. Sadak himself, I mean, throughout kickoff, I think he saved them in their run in that, in that instance. Probably a big reason why they actually qualified in the first place. Then Count Zine is popping off. And then Les, of course, that guy is for sure one of the best players in the world, and he consistently is saving them in moments. So I think individual skill is that thing that uh, just is there consistently for them always. Yeah, but I think that really the guy who really ties that all together is always going to be Sudok. He occasionally has against your point, Christy, where we we are kind of always seeing one different person take over, have their moment in a match. Sadak is consistently the guy who I think is giving the team the vision, right? He's talked that even all the way back last year, he was considering playing these Phoenix comps. He was playing these ideas. Yeah. It really seems like he's kind of unleashed this year to really make a loud that fits what he wants the team's identity to be, which is why I really love watching this team, because their style is so unique, it's, is so different, that he's willing to take the it's risks. really funny to me that he's like, oh, I was trying to play this Phoenix comp like way back when. And then Aspas is like, oh, I want to play Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, you're so sure. he could have done that the time. Well, what do you know? I mean, hey, a lot of question marks there for sure. But one thing that we know for sure that has been consistent uh, ever since this player has been on the lineup, it's less. Uh, this guy has always been an X Factor ender for this team. And he's still playing like it. He's still playing like a champ. 100%. And, and I think, y really, to me, Les is always the guy that makes these types of comps work for Loud, right? Because when you're playing without a Sentinel, all of a sudden you need to put bodies on the line. And Les is the guy, whether it's the Viper or whatnot, that is in front, that is taking forward space, getting information from the team, playing so nicely around his utility. I, I just feel like, of course, he's a shooter, but also the timings he's able to take, he just knows when to go for those fights. I, I think for me, when I was listening to Ethan talk in the, in the video that rolled before we came live, was he said, Loud is relentless. And that's the thing that that's we have to be really yeah. careful. And that embodies Les. Right, this guy is so hungry. Whenever he sees a potential kill, he will just push forward. Like he's he's like a shark. Whenever he smells blood, he just goes for it every single time. And that guy is scary when yeah. he does that. And he does it so often that, like, yeah, you have to be worried about less on the server every time. Of course. And if you watch how Sodic is playing the breach on ascent. Every early round, nine rounds out of ten, line it's just setting up. up less. It's like, <laughs> I am going to make yeah. my boy pop off, and it works so wonderfully for him. It's crazy that they do put so much into enabling this guy in comps like that, but then you see On a Viper! <laughs> but then you see a completely different style of play when, when you switch over. He's playing like the full lurk, full rat style, and then you'll watch him go and even without support, take these aggressive yeah. rates. He's just a guy who has so many different modes, but his mechanics and his flexibility allow him to just excel in any of those moments. He is the all-around player for loud that's so true I, and, and i think that that is such a valuable tool to have especially you know when the, the play the level of play has just exponentially increased and then you can still have guys like less that are still consistent still popping off it's going to be a lot for their opponents to deal with let's move on to the other side of the field you got yourself that na super team and even though this is a squad that did not make it to madrid i think everyone still has incredibly high hopes and how could you not when you have players like like this on your team. You got the optic core. You have two world champions as well. There is just so much Mimi to be excited for when it comes to NRG going into stage one. I mean, they were flawless in kickoff until they played Sentinels in the playoffs. They lost a close 2 1 to them, and that's how they got knocked out. Like, they, they lost to the current best team in the world. So you can't really fault them for what happened there. Um, but overall, I think my impression with NRG was that. Honestly, kind of the opposite of Loud, where Loud is the team that is lent into Sadok's identity of playing these crazy comps, of playing a very unique, different style. This is a squad that is still that NRG that you look at them, you watch them play, and your biggest thing is like, damn, this team has insane fundamentals. Ethan's Flash is setting up Demon 1. The synergy between Crashies and Victor. They do the simple stuff, they do the mid-rounding, yeah. and they execute on it incredibly well, even if they're not playing those same kind of new meta compositions that a team like Loud does. 100%. It's, look, they've been 
around the block a long time. They're not reinventing the wheel either. And that's sort of Very my true. biggest question for them is how much have they tried to change sure. coming into this stage? Like, do they really experiment old more? stuff? They were like, all every exactly. map was like single sky for uh -huh. the most part back in kickoff. So there is a potential for them to maybe pull something out new here. But the argument, especially for an event like kickoff, you're right at the top of the year of playing that style that everyone knows like the back of their hand, that allows you to focus on the fundamentals. That allows you to have that pinpoint accuracy that NRG, I completely identify with them at this point. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I need to see what the actual ceiling for this team is because on paper it is limitless. way up there. Yeah. Like, it's limitless. You're right. And I don't think we saw even close to that at kickoff. I mean, you're implementing two world champions into what was like the winningest core of the pre-partnership era. I mean, that sounds easy to me. And the yeah. fact that we didn't see it in the first three games. You say like, we didn't see it, but uh, they, I, they lost to Sentinels okay, in a close 2-0 Fury, 2-0 C9, 1-2 to Sentinels, and yeah. they lose to 10s on top of the box and market that Riot added footsteps to the top of to commemorate the moment. <laughs> like, what do you mean they didn't show us? Like, they was the best team in the freaking world. I, dude, like, I, I don't know. It just wasn't. It's They should be the best team in the world, right? They should be the ones convincing you against Sentinels, okay. right? They, they shouldn't have, I mean, I, I guess they should have, like, those clutch moments maybe that they're pulling off against. God, this just feels like deja vu from the last segment. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> just, look, here, here's what I'm going to say about energy. I feel like the, this team should 100% win an America split this year. Yeah. And if they don't, it's a failure. And I don't think I've seen the potential for them to do that when Sentinels is playing the way that they are, when Lev has the potential to go crazy when loud is up here as well. I, we'll see it today, but I mean, all right. Oh, oh, oh. I'm on board. Yeah, I'm on right. board. Well, they go ahead and handshake it out. Let's go ahead and hear from Ethan, who's standing by with Smix. Ethan, I have a very quick, very serious question for you. If you have a free stream sub to give out, would you pick FNS or Sam? Uh, I'll give it to FNS. I think Sam's got enough. Sam isn't <laughs> it anymore. I'm sure FNS is very happy to hear that. Best of luck today. Thank you. All right, everyone, we're just dropping Resident a couple gifts in this Hood. chat right now. <laughs> yeah. I need to see Vanessa's chat right now. Prime sub, prime sub. Yeah. <laughs> just drop a couple gifts in, in, in uh, Vanessa's chat, and I'm sure he'll thank you. Uh, well, of course. Yeah. What happened? How much you paying you? <laughs> Listen, I uh, cannot disclose, but checks in the mail. <laughs> He's All right, guys, mail, well, but you're paying him? What's going on? Here? I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, the economy's crazy. In any case, <laughs> guys, you shouldn't pay for at work kickoff, you're doing. At kickoff, all right, we got to see Demon One on this NRG lineup here. Uh, but we didn't get to see the Demon One that dominates the way that we usually expect. He was still putting up great numbers, but I definitely felt like Demon 1 needed to find himself a little bit on this team still in kickoff. And least. I think we saw matches where he did step up for to that sure. level. Oh, no. Those games against Sentinels in particular, it was yeah. a slower start in those first two matches. They still won. He then went and had great performances in their playoff game. I think what was really the, the standout for me wasn't necessarily how well his stats or his numbers compared to previously, but the style that he's playing. Previously on EG, he was flexing over to the Aster, to the Brim. He was like playing the star duelist, but also going around to some other things. Now he's playing 100% only Jet is allowed, and also Jet's like, if you don't buy the operator every single round, you're off the team. Yeah. Like, he's, he's buying yeah. it so much more than he did before, but the setup is still really good, and it is just kind of interesting to see a team implement a player like this in a slightly different way. Yeah, we got like the one pocket omen from him on split, but even I then, forgot about even that one, then, yeah. that's the guy that's going to be rocking the yeah. up, right? You know, if, if you're playing that type of style, you can let Rays go for the rifle, go look for the ult on those rounds, so it's still very much just he is in our op slot permanently for this team. Do we feel like that demon one on this lineup, you know, it, it makes sense, right? I mean, surely he's oh, going to be blending into like this <laughs> team and just frying eventually. Yep. I mean, I, I just feel like uh, when it comes down to NRG Bala, there is there's so many question marks with this team because we just saw with Leviathan what happened, oh, yeah. them falling the C9. It does feel like, you know, there could potentially be like over, not overhyped teams, but hyped up teams, maybe not living up to the potential in day one. I mean, absolutely. We're still very early in the season, of course, right? This is a development period for in a fact, lot of In fact, we've only season. played one match. <laughs> Very true. Uh, and Demon One is a player that's still developmental. I mean, he was the best player of the year last year, but, I mean, he hasn't played that much, right? Uh, you, this is a guy that I think still has a lot to learn in terms of the fundamentals, in terms of a depth of playbook that, like, yeah. Aspas has, right? He, Aspas has a bag, but Demon One doesn't really have that yet. He's flashy. He will hit the shots. Um, his movement's great. 
but in terms of being able to make certain plays, like it's just mm. he's relying on the mechanics most of the time. And I think right now he's learning from his teammates how to be really cerebral. And but there's no better team down. to learn from, I think. Absolutely. I was going to say the him. same exact thing. No better team to learn from, from NR than NRG. But let's uh, go ahead and send it over to the coaches for Map Select. Find out where we're headed. Hey guys, welcome to Map Pick Band. Um, after a coin flip, it was determined that NRG is going to be Team A and Lau's going to be Team B. So NRG gets the first Map Band. Uh, we'll ban Icebox. NRG bans Icebox. Uh, loud, your map ban? Split. Split, loud uh, ban split. And your first map pick, energy? Uh, we'll pick Breeze. Energy picks Breeze and your side? Attack. Uh, uh, loud picks attack. Uh, and your map pick, loud? Sunset. Sunset. And your side pick, energy? <clears throat> we'll take attack. Attack, okay. And your map pick, energy? Sorry, uh, map ban. Uh, ban Lotus. Energy bans Lotus, and your map ban loud? Ban bind. Uh, loud bans bind, so the default map is going to be Ascent, and RG gets to pick slide. Defense. Okay, and RG picks defense. Awesome. Good luck, have fun, guys. All right, well, the stage is set as we have two teams that are going to look to put on a show for everyone here at VCT Americas. Our last match of the day, and it's going to be NRG facing off against an incredible loud lineup coming off of a fourth place finish at Madrid. Real fast, just want to ask predictions. Where are we going? Name, name, name? Uh, NRG. Loud. Energy. Ooh, I love this. All right, folks. Well, let's go ahead and see how this whole thing's going to play out and send it over to Smix, who's at the stage, to bring out our teams. Right, Games Arena, it is my pleasure to welcome this North American powerhouse team that we all want to see more of. Make some noise for Energy! Eles chegaram para buscar mais um título aqui no Américas. Façam um barulho para Loud! NRG versus Loud. And even though in the past when we say El Clasico, we talk about, you know, Finesse being on the team, it is a little bit different this time around, not seeing him on the stage going up against Sadok. But it is going to be quite interesting to see what Ethan can do in that IGL role against Sadok, who these guys obviously have encountered each other plenty of times in the past. This is a rivalry that we have seen evolve previously, right? Yeah. New rosters on both of these squads. 
loud a team that for the last two years have had new rookies, new ideas coming in, and really have had to redefine themselves both times. But still, consistently, this match has always delivered. I think Ethan or Finesse, whoever's leading this squad, will still be able to bring it to loud. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting for the newcomers on NRG, right? Ethan and Demon One to feel this energy coming from the crowd. I mean, they're familiar right with loud too. They played them absolutely, so much absolutely. But yeah. this is this is history, right? They're stepping into a rivalry yeah. that yeah, they didn't have. You didn't, they didn't have that pressure on EG in the, in the previous iterations. And look, if you're one of those guys like Demon One coming in here, you couldn't have asked for a better map pool to play this series out on, right? You've got Breeze and Ascent in the Jet Kingdom map. Even the Sunset, he was playing that agent on back in lock or back in kickoff. So this is his chance from the get-go here to dominate on the off. And for Quick on the other side, this is really a question of whether that form he hit towards the end of Madrid can stick around. He carries he it through. sick in those last few matches after a disappointing kickoff, a slow group stage. And I think this is really the test against one of the best duelists in the world on two of the quintessential jet maps if he can hold his own. Yeah, and to speak on the Breeze again too, this was a map that I think Loud looked very shaky on at Madrid, especially yeah. in that opening game against FPX. Uh, so I think NRG going straight for it right here is a great uh, read here from Chat and a good game plan going into this. And this is the match, uh, or the map, excuse me, I was most impressed with from NRG here. The synergy was excellent. Demon One's off in the way. Ethan set him up. It was all really well constructed. Warren's agent select, and there oh, is oh, a oh, change. Okay. Ethan going from the KO to the Yoru. I, I honestly love this. I think you can still set your teammates up with the flashes in a lot of the same ways, but you unlock so much with defensive side rotation and with different interesting double dive pathing on attack. Exactly, and I think especially break the typical uh, cypher setups as well, right? Yes. When you have the double dive, all of a sudden you're overwhelming very deep into the site, very, very fast. You're breaking through those choke points. And I think decoys. more and more teams need to be playing this York. Yeah, breaking that trip of the decoy, being able to yep. dominate it. I, I also just get vibes back from EG where Ethan was playing that defensive, real uh, utility-heavy support your and i think that was exactly what we're going to see this is going to be very very fascinating but 100 percent we are in store for a good one let's go ahead and send it over to your cast as they put the class in el clasico it's Doug and baby bay Thank you so much, Shubi. A tale as old as time. And Dre, you know, we've talked so much about energy and loud and the history that these two teams have against each other, but we gotta talk about the comps. We gotta talk yeah. about the Yoru and the Jets, specifically Ethan on the Yoru. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, we've seen Ethan be comfortable on the Yoru many times right, before, sure. right? Especially on maps like Pearl, which is not in the map pool anymore, but he's great on it. But the question yeah. I have is, is he gonna be able to support Demon One the same way on this Yoru as he was able to do on the KO? Now, on the flip side, Ender is completely right. You're able to break those trips with that clone and, and everything like that, which can counter less in the long run. And that's why I actually like Yoru on this map a lot, but it's kind of tough sometimes when you're running the Jet and Yoru because the KO gets a lot of value with that dagger and not having that info can be very impactful in rounds like this. It'll be interesting to see how that dynamic plays out. Ethan, a world-class player in his own right, and he's made quite a name for himself now on the, on the Yoru with an opportunity to set up a star duelist. All that said, though, energy starting on the defensive side is it's Loud, who's going to be looking to set the pace for this map. Mm -hmm. They've already crept up halls a little bit here. Trip keeping him back, and Crashy's not far off. Ooh, it's getting dangerous for Crashy's right now. Loud is still pressing the matter on him. Keep an eye on that. The dash has been procced, but again, it's that pesky little trip. It's going to keep him at bay. The door goes oh. up. The dash is used, and Mark turns on QCK with the classic, no less, getting the kill. Opener has been found, but Sonic is there on the trade. Flash swinging through as Ethan is there to greet. Numbers in favor of NRG. That was a nutty shot from Marv on the QCK there. I don't know how he did that with a classic, though. Yeah, a little two-tap from a distance. Jeez. And they've been waiting, what, 30-something days to play any type of match, you know. The Iceman wants it bad. Yeah, what, do, what happens when you give NRG this much time? Left. When you give Chet this much time in the lab? We'll see if they oh. can convert this pistol as less. Taking a ton of damage. Oh, NRG wins this in almost flawless fashion. And in this round, it's just classic loud on Breeze. QCK just goes halls every round, it feels like. You yeah, know? sure. And NRG clearly aware of that. They obviously were watching Madrid this entire time. So they actually had a good setup for it. And honestly, that kill from Marv, that is crazy. Ooh. And just a crossfire on the site to clear it off. And I mean, he was sitting on 30 HP, he even peaked in the A main earlier there. Yeah. So he's already playing with confidence that 
I don't think we really saw him play with in, in the kickoff. He didn't do bad necessarily, but he didn't play to the Marv that we know he is. Right, right. And even he knew that. I had conversations with him about that, and he was telling me, he's like, no, like, I'm not satisfied. Reasons for hope for the NRG faithful. That's her up early on loud, and you're right, seeing some of the confidence coming out from their players, such as Marv, who's just been so historic in his own right. Now donning the NRG banner. No buy on the side of Loud. Meanwhile, Guardians and Spectres are plenty for the defense. And speaking of which, as soon as we call his name, he delivers with another kill. He's crispy today, Doug. I think that's, I mean, that leans into confidence a lot too, yeah. right? I mean, it's early in the game. Yeah, these are the eco frags, you know, whatever, but these are confidence kills. Yeah, 100%. It builds up and that's why you see them already running away from that site because they're like, you know what? Let's not let a player like Marv get hot. But the problem is, it's the one-two punch combo. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna run into Demon One. Yeah, sure would hate. <laughs> sure would hate to not have <laughs> Marv. I can't use that. <laughs> All worked up with Demon One on the other side. Hey, and you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. There he goes. Starting to see some of those eco frags again Remains. come through. Okay. And some damage has been dealt. Both Ethan and Demon One down. Can he do it, Doug? No. No. 35 HP, and he's been good, but this is a different level of good. Oh. I have a couple of targets to deal with now. Three bullets left. <laughs> Options far from plentiful as energy get their second. And I, I do think it's important here too to note, they are gonna keep three guardians going into the next. So they can buy Team around eight. this and yeah. they, they've got a couple of options here. Yeah, energy invested heavy money into this round. Yep. And I mean, it ended up paying out. They only lost what, like two guns maybe? Yeah. Or maybe not even. They probably lost, they lost the guardian and the specter. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So already investing heavily into this, not trying to get cheese at all. That's, that's a crazy stat. That Seven out of wild. the 10 players in this match have won a global event. That's crazy. This is truly a, a Titan v Titan matchup yeah. that we have on our hands. That's a treat. And that's, I don't feel like it's something you can say very often. Yeah. I mean, we might have 10 eventually, right? QCK has mm -hmm. been spectacular on this roster. Is that early flash? Team one with the dash proct. Great damage. The dart over the top two. You can tell what the idea was there. The setup is pretty. Shots not landing on a Cohen team yet. A little bit of damage done, but no kill found. And I was curious, you know, how will Ethan start setting up Demon 1? But there it was, the Yoru Flash, I believe, in that mid-pillar area. Yeah, so I think are, it... So still trying to set him up, similarly to when they played the KO. Yeah, that and the dart. The intentions were clear. <laughs> Kamal Zin, finally, it was a bit labored, but he ultimately does meet his demise. NRG with the numbers advantage. And Loud, they've, they've played this a bit more methodically so far. He's they've been very cautious on their approach. So yeah, Viper Wall go up towards A. You do have some defense here, courtesy of Ethan and Marv. And that knife only tagging one. Surely you expect this tight. Yeah, Marv's ready for this mid door peak. Oh, it's yeah, just easy it for him. I mean, QCK falls, and that's the tip of the spear. However, Ethan is surrounded. Now position given away as he has to swing out and take the fight. Falls to the hands of Sadak. And now Loud with some breathing room. Left. Just a ghost in the hands of Crashies. I know exactly where you are. And that early neural theft is certainly going to help. Don't know exactly where Retake is coming from here, but... Can he get a gun here? He should be able to get one. And Sadok is low after that there little altercation is. he had with Ethan. Oh, oh the shock dart's gonna be huge! No oh. doubt, two Vandals and a Guardian. The flash out of Sadok takes matters into his own hands, flashing for himself through the wall, leading from the front. A 2v2 now as the spike ticks away. Demon crashes with so much to do. Look at the minimap, Doug. There's a reflank from mid. Is he gonna get the timing? Less oh, on the prowl. The first one falls. Crashies will Whoa. crumble as well. Louder on the board. A very, very slow round from Loud there. Taking their 1v1s and winning them. Honestly, that kill that Sadhak got onto Ethan was the knife in the back of NRG. If he had not gotten that kill, the round was surely over. And then on top of that, dodging the shock dart, being aware of yeah. the audio cue, and then just going for the YOLO ha Hail Mary flash play yeah. through the wall. I mean, he's one HP. What more can he do in that spot? He knows if he just sits there and does nothing, he's just gonna die. He's gonna die, free. right. So he gambles a little bit, makes a play for himself. Beautiful. And it pays off. 
taking out an op in the hands of Demon One. We talked about this a lot during yeah. the kickoff, right? Like they were trying to get an op in this man's hands as soon as possible. As they should. And he looked great with the op in kickoff, honestly. Yeah. It is glass cannon though, and Victor's left. Also, it's just a sheriff in light armor. I want to point out how aggressive QCK has been playing this attack so far. Yeah, he's sitting at zero and three. He's been getting punished quite a bit. But he's been like taking all this mid space. Yeah. Or or if it was halls as well, like yeah. very aggressively. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that was off of Marv getting a timing and taking some space. But Sadak again, aware of where his weakness might be. That's takes care of him. That's a hard read from the IGL because he actually tagged Demon One with the dagger earlier in the round. Mm. So to, to actually just re aggro there, understanding that like the jet's not gonna sit there the entire round. You it's not likely for that to happen. He could right. be. But to just check it and then clear that all that space out. Oh, this is a fake. Now he's selling the fake on top of it. The thing is... Look, they have Cypher free. Yeah, well, but some of the Cypher util is still up. And... Yeah, Vic shouldn't be getting hit by this, but they've managed to circumvent oh. all of it. So they've gotten out onto site. They're starting to push into spawn. NRG with a lot to do here. And I wonder why they're pushing so far ahead when they have this trip. Or maybe their I plan is to just have a crossfire from B main and spawn area. And they hear the audio. Will the scrap go their way? Ethan just has a sheriff. The rifle has been handed over to Victor. You see the ult instantly used and it's put right into the steady hands of the Sentinels. He gets a second. Now Ethan pushing forward. Purely a reconnaissance mission. He's getting all the info he could possibly want. The only thing that's been left unanswered here is where is Les? A flash over the wall as Ethan goes up top. Victor's there to trade. Now Les left alone, a 1v3. Spike has been taking for a little while. He's a lot of targets to deal with. That's not no been way. halved. Time! Time is of the essence! He's gotten it down to 1v1! And Les delivers for loud again! The Red Bull clutches! We're tied! Oh my gosh, and he almost dies with the bomb playing with fire there. What a, what an animal! I mean, we saw this in Madrid, and he brought it back with him. Dude, you, you asked me earlier, Les was in a 1v3. You're like, can he do it? Nah. I, I mean, it was <laughs> a little delayed, it. but yeah, he hit it. And the, the IG yelling already from the side of, of Loud and Sadak, so beautiful. Like I said, tagging Demon 1 early with that dagger, and then on top of that, re-clearing the space, getting the kill on the Marv so there's no smokes on online, committing the KO ult to sell the fake even further. Look, that's why he's cheesing so hard right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, if I if I was the IGL and Les was on my team, I'd be smiling too. Beautiful. Unbelievable. Right back into the action here. The buy for NRG, not great. No blades to speak of either. It's just sheriffs, and because of the lack of weaponry, they decide to play this in bunches. <laughs> QCK and Halls. Can we just name him, crown him the king of Halls? I, mean, I mean, if he might have to after this year. Yeah. If he what makes a play, it might be worth donning the title. It's just like, even if you, even if he doesn't kill you, right? Just the just fact that you have down. to like yeah. keep somebody there the entire round. Yeah. It's so annoying to play, like to deal with. Oh! Well, that's one done. Still plenty of work to do. How much work can they find? Again, a reminder, the weaponry here is not great. Don't really have the resources to make this a fair fight. And you're starting to see the effects of that on full display here. NRG continue to fall apart. Only one kill found, maybe a little bit more. Oh, oh! <laughs> Damage has been dealt, but the round in favor of Loud. That does clean, clean, clean anti-eco from Loud. I mean, Demon 1 hit a nasty, nasty shot on Sadhok, but after that, you know, just mellowing out the round, slowing it down, not rushing the plant is really important in rounds like this, and then fighting together once that wall is about to go down. Oh, we missed it. We've been teased by this replay. <laughs> it was a very nice shot, though. <laughs> that one, too. Oh, there it is. Thank you, guys. Wow. Your fault. I mean, just a pixel. That's all it takes. You know, there's been a lot of conversation about Demon 1 of last year mm -hmm. compared to Demon 1 of kickoff and how it really just felt like Demon 1 during kickoff was a shadow of the man that everyone had grown to know him to be. Mm -hmm. Given what you've seen so far, what is your read on Demon 1? I think that even even last year, he had a slow start to the year. I mean, he mm -hmm. just got put into the roster straight up, yeah, and sure. it took him a little bit of time. And I mean, I'm a player I'm a player that's exactly like that. I, I usually tend to heat up like towards the middle of the of the season. Sure. So 
in a format like this, I think you can get away with it, but in a, in a tournament like kickoff where you gotta win every single match, and keep in mind, they only lost one match yeah. to not qualify for Majid, and it was close. Yeah. They almost beat uh, beat Sentinels on that first map. It was 16-14, right. so I think he's actually looked pretty good overall. I don't think that we're, we're missing out on too much, and I think that it just takes time to be comfortable with the players on your team, and I think this is a good opportunity for him to show, like, hey, now that we have time under the belt, I'm still here, baby, you know? It's but Les is still here. He's never left. Yeah, Les, Les has never left. He's got the op in his hands again. Demon 1 dies. A little bit of a peak mid, and that's where there is some loud presence. Oh. Dark getting some early info. Inserting Ethan. Looked like it was just a peak, and then a dash away. That's a lot of pressure. Oh. And Barely missed. Yeah, that's a miss that we don't see super often. He had everything for that, too. He had the audio cue. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly where they were. Maybe still needs a little bit of time to heat up on that operator. And look at this. Since they got the drone out early, QCK putting all that pressure in mid with Sadhok, that opens up halls for Kawazin. Demon one getting aggressive here in mid. I like this gameplay right now from NRG. Me too. Not being too stagnant and actually re-clearing space. And honestly, I think Boom. on the other side, if Demon One gets an opener on QCK. Man doesn't miss twice. I really like the way Sadak has approached calling this round in the last couple of rounds, to be honest. He's picking the right side every time. Mm -hmm. Oh! And he's shooting. <laughs> he's, I mean, 30 seconds left. he's hitting the shots as well as Mar falls. Now they're going to continue to push their way over towards A. You see them Thank taking you. a bit of a step back. Loudar. Crash, he tries to get some damage done with the ult he does. Sadak down. Numbers in favor of the defense. They're, How do they're they approach so, this retake? I mean, they're so separated. Mm -hmm. Tui's is taking a step back, presumably for a lineup with a spit. I don't know if he actually has it. Molly's online right now. Yeah, oh, that's a that's a huge, huge kill from last. This opens up the post plant. Look how confident he is. Oh, a one for one. Kalantin with two shots. It's all on the two. He's now Ethan on the other side. Wow. And another big moment in favor of Loud. Loud are winning all the clutches right now, Doug. It's, it's early, but they've all gone their way. You're right. And that's scary because I feel like Loud is a team that takes a little bit to heat up in the actual series that they play. I feel like most of the time when they do lose a series, it's because they give the first map for free. Yeah. But now they're already clapping. It's four to two. This is a good half so far. And they've controlled the pace. I think it's also worth noting that's, that's on the other side of a timeout, an early timeout from Chet. Mm -hmm. Already gone through one of those. Loud yeah. hanging on to a two round lead. They've got two easiest pit to play with. Blades online for Demon One. That dart is to set him up, but doesn't get a scan on anybody. They know. They know. Oh my gosh. There was a triple peak intended for Halls there, which is just crazy. I mean, they had Demon One, they had Vic, and then Ethan over the top. It was a cool setup. It just didn't amount to anything. Yeah, Demon One just whiffed that last knife that he had, but Victor's been so crispy with the headshots right now. What? Going to drop ult two. He's spamming through the cage. Dropping two. Now the Viper wall goes up. The side is theirs. Able to left, and that's all Les needs. Glad look good, man. Yeah. And something I want to point out is how slow they approach the anti eco rounds. They don't I mean, want. It feels like every round. Yeah. Yeah, well, kind of in some of the gun rounds, QZK has been taking a lot of space in mid or a lot of space in halls. Sure. Where, where, yeah, on the extremities, they are playing very fast. You're right. But on these anti eco rounds, they're playing, they're waiting for any type of aggression at all. Because they know at some point, right, NRG wants to make, make something happen. Mm. Especially when you have Demon One with knives. You know he's going to try to go for some type of play. Yeah, he's got to make You don't want to gamble up. with knives. You know, you don't want to sit there on site AFK, even though it might be the right play. Hit use from Rob right off the bat. The trip is there too. Catching on to the first. The spam wow. connects QCK down. But with that goes the pit as Les responds. Can invest the KO ult as well. I feel like he just had that. So much value out of this. And they're still taking their time. They're walking in, Doug. Patient with it. Crash. He's oh. around the corner, spotting what? the first, but Les delivers once more. 
This guy's trading like an animal. Hey, it's only been eight rounds, and I'm tired of saying his name. <laughs> He's just been so consistent. Where's the response? Welcome to my Currently, world. Demon 1 finding some value with the op. It's not going to matter as much with a pit in his face. Less than two weeks left alone. A one for one. No Molly's on. Two weeks still up. Looking for any target that dare challenge. That dare creep forward into the goo. Oh. The spam just barely missing. It's a game of chicken. And he's oh gonna hold it the whole way. In the face of the pit, NRG get their third. I like the idea from Loud. I, I, I like the change of pace. They read into that. Viper ult from Marv, and they went for a set play to try to counter him, and they actually took him out. Yeah, right off the bat. It was nice. And even on the post plan, I like the idea of using this Viper's pit to just kind of spam the bomb. Yeah. Doesn't go their way, and Demon 1 hit a really nice shot on the Sadok, who honestly, that flash would have hit had it been like a millisecond later. But that was a nice flick from Demon 1 onto him on the default box. Blades online for TCK, and Cohen is his ult to boot. Spike not even in tow right now. As much like we've seen for Loud, it's... It's that slow default. Mm-hmm. Crashies is taking a ton of space halls. Wow. Oh, wow. Ethan still didn't see him on that last jump spot. That's who he thought he saw him. You gotta be careful here. Demon 1 is playing contained mid with the op. Wow. What a heads-up play from QCK there. He understands that a lot of these rounds, he's just been dry peeking, taking that fight aggressive early on, right? So now he knows, okay, they're probably going to try to punish me. I have to jump spot this in case there's an off. Or a rifler, right? And the info's gathered. Demon 1 has not moved from this spot. No rotation being made. Maybe second guessing himself from the last time he got spotted in A main. Deciding to stay. Maybe they rewalk in again. But it looks like it's just going to be a B hit here. They've cleared all of the trips. Knife has been dropped. The walls are up. PCK pushing forward. Concealed by the pillar for now, but pushed to post. Oh, great Blast dart! And continues to hunt, what? continues to hold W. The kid's just not missing. 30 seconds left. I mean, at this point, the money's not great. It <laughs> feels like you call for a save, right? He's on something right now, man. He's trying to prove a point right now. I, what's the message that he's trying to send? He's the best player in the world is what he's trying to say. And he's showing it right now. Uh, it's hard to make an argument against that, given the performance he's had so far. At least certainly worth the conversation. He, I mean, you said it best. He's on one. Yeah, he really is. I mean, e even, even in that previous round where that Viper's pit went out and he got the trade on the Viper, then he instantly trades Crashy's back sight. It was like so Steady. fast. Yep. And he's winning clutches. This guy's, this guy's on something. Loud looks super, super confident on this map so far on their attack. And they didn't even have to use Soval in, into that round, so they still have it. And Knives going into this next round. Well, I think this, this matchup, too, gives us a really interesting He's opportunity. Eight. I'm so sorry. No, He's 18 and 5. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. I mean, how many 30 bombs are we going to see today? We're, yeah, we're certainly pushing a limit here. That goes there. That's an outrageous performance. Yeah. And it's just round 10. And kind of a, a light investment into this round. Light armor across the board. So trying to build some type of economy is NRG. They've got to build Beautiful. something. And that's the first brick that's been laid. Sadak falls. The Stinger's not going to no find any way. value there. And Kalantin finally on the board. Getting his first two kills of the map and doing so in a big way. And they just didn't expect the trades. They don't expect the mid door either. They're just getting caught off guard in every in every angle. And remember, this was a, a bit of a labored force here, right? There was a stinger, there was light armor trying to build up around the op in the hands standing. of Demon 1. Spike planted. I mean, jeez. It's kind of disrespectful in a way. Like for Kawazin to just Walk straight back into the op line after his teammate gets taken out. Yeah. And then he gets two on top of it. Like, you just don't, you're not ready for those peaks sometimes. But in, in, a, in a match like this, you have to be dialed in. You have to be aware of every possibility, especially if you want to be the best. I think this situation gives us a unique opportunity to have a conversation around value in playing in internationals. Mm -hmm. Versus being at home and prepping and watching film, right? And obviously, if you've yeah. been keeping up with 
the Valorant season so far. Loud just recently returned from a trip to Madrid where they came in fourth. Yeah. And you can have the conversation around whether or not that was good enough or bad enough, whatever. But the truth is, NRG was home, right? Yeah. While Loud was getting live reps against the best teams in the world. It really seems like they've benefited greatly from having that experience. Yeah. I mean, when you're when you're making these international events, you're scrimming the best teams, right? Yeah. Because you have to scrim somebody and they only have each other. So, yeah, at NRG had a lot of time to maybe scrim against the other teams that didn't qualify and et cetera, et cetera. But the level of play isn't as high as sure. that big, big moment because you're trying to win a trophy when you're over there at an international. And also, match rust is very real. No way! Wise Who Wisdom says feed the hot hand. And Les, who's at 18 kills, has an op. <laughs> Attack side op is Cypher. And well, if it ain't broke, why not, right? No, they try oh. to swing ahead of the drone, and there it is. The fight continues to ensue. Demon oh. one with three. The Sheriff lights up the kill feed as he finally gets away. Not able to convert on much else. Crashies has managed to upgrade a weapon. Another not, so not gonna connect, and Marv gets another. Less once again in a position to make a play, but this time the antics are stuffed as NRG gets around. Last round before uh, we got to see a replay of what Demon One just did. That third shot was so disgusting. Yeah, yeah. I have to see this over. We had a chance to look at it again. There's the first on the QCK, the second. Counting oh. walks into his crosshair, and Sadak just teed up for the last. Oh my gosh. Marv also hit a big shot in there. Yeah, he did. That's the demon one we know. The loud fans going crazy right now. For good reason. They've looked very good. This rivalry that goes. Oh, he sees his arm. So far back, Sadok falls Spike the blades. Mid. Punishing the IGL and Victor joining in on the fun. Get out of my way. That was great support from Victor there. Understanding that last time they were in this scenario, somebody, it was, it was I think it was two E's, peeked from window and killed them both for free. So just to be dialed in on that angle and just let let Demon One just reign supreme on that, on that line is beautiful. This one's been a bit methodical, but they're finding the value in the kills they want really Ooh. anywhere across the map. Now it's on QCK to see if he can do a bit of the same. This would be something. If he can pull it off, he's gone deep behind enemy lines. They've got to know where he is. Yeah, he's making footsteps everywhere right now. Player Easy standing. for Marv. And it all falls on to Kalenzin. In a 1v4 to close out the half. And he got spotted. Oh, what a, what a flash, but... Turns it. <laughs> and <laughs> still lands the shots onto Ethan. It ended up flashing Ethan, actually, as well. <laughs> but it was a cool... That was a very cool lineup flash. I mean, I'm sure we're going to see left. that in, uh, in our ranked games in the future. Cool. He tanked the molly, trying to find the timing, but the window was shut at the hands of Marv. He gets three on the round, energy gets a Switching five, sides. and honestly, it's it's a closer score than what I expected, given what we've seen. Yeah, I mean, Les kind of just dominated <laughs> the entire first half, like first part of the first half. But I'm glad that energy started clapping back and actually fighting back and, and hitting their shots because it felt like for a second they were just getting out aim. I mean, 18 kills for the youngster for loud in the first half, 18, seven and four, and that was on <laughs> attack as Cypher. There, see so, that flap that was so time. unfortunate. It truly was. Loud, look incredible, and NRG still have a little bit to do. Let's take a listen and hear from Ethan and get his thoughts on what it's been like to join the NRG roster up until this point. So in my career, like every team you join is basically just starting from scratch, no matter how good everyone is. Um, so it is just all about time. Um, and we definitely didn't have a lot of time. So that's kind of just how it went. And, you know, now we have a, a lot of time to improve. And so, you know, over all of Madrid, we've been practicing. I think we started literally the day after we lost uh, in kickoff. So we've been practicing the whole time. We know there's a lot to a lot to do. And, you know, we've, we've been putting the work in. So hopefully it pays off. Again, Dre, the age-old conversation around getting those experience, getting that rep on the international stage, just being at home and working and grinding and being in the lab, things like that. And I think, again, it I'm surprised that the score is as close as it is because it felt like for the majority of that first <laughs> half, Loud were pulling away. Yeah, and it makes you think, you know, had those had that 3v1 not happened or had that other yeah. one, 1v1 not happened, this yeah. could be an even game or even NRG being in the, in, in the lead. So 
they're playing they're playing good right now but you know what i didn't see that we saw a lot of a, a lot of from ethan was setting up demon one with those flashes he you can't really set up pop flashes the same way on your yoru as you can with the ko it's just not possible you know because like with sure. the ko flash it can pop in the air it can do anything but with the yoru flash you have to bounce it so it's it's not as strong here but maybe on this attack we're gonna see the yoru the yoru actually reign supreme because of the fact that he can tp past the cypher chips because he can use the clone to bait him out and etc so i'm hoping to see a little bit more out of a uh, NRG on this attack. Well, and I think we will too as we think about again this dynamic of the Yoru flashes and Demon One and how they kind of set them up. It's like tried and true jet dashing into the cloud burst, yeah. the Yoru flash popping just on the other side, and then the swing. I think we saw hints of that on defense. Again, I think about the second round on mid with the dart that was over the yeah, top yeah. two. They're trying some of those things, and I imagine it'll be much more prevalent here in the second half. NRG on the attack now, facing a two round deficit. Questions abound on how Ethan will be able to support his star. I really like this orb, Doug. Why? This orb is so sick because it it not only lets you lurk up mid and not get shot from any AWP or mid door or any rifle that's holding it, but you can walk all the way in. You have two options. You can pop flash through to the left. You can go to mid door, split A. It basically just denies a lot of info from the defensive side. It also still leaves the wall as an option. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you'll see Vipers use that wall to cover that exact same area. Yeah, on the, on, on the mid to A splits, mm -hmm. you're 100% correct. So they still have that tool at their disposal, and you imagine it'll be going up any moment here. The yeah. setup is there for an A hit. I think also worth noting, Cypher Utility that's normally set up on B is currently posted up on A. And it's very far back. Yeah. Like, usually you see chips maybe a little bit more in front of the default box trying to kill the bomb planners and whatnot, but this one is for anybody that's trying to push a little too far and maybe go through this viper wall. Especially on a pistol. Oh, wow. the shocks, he was decayed. Ethan had no shot. <laughs> oh, but he didn't, get to, he didn't even get to play the game. No. <laughs> what are you doing? This trip is still up. I don't even think they're aware of it. They managed to get the spike down, and Demon One has managed to get behind enemy lines. Wow. Assassination style on the first. Kalantin was there to try to fight back, but falls in the same way. And now you've got Marv, who's going to be hitting a late flank. They're starting to swarm around loud. The defenses, or what's left of them, oh. outnumbered and outgunned. Three now for NRG. It's Sadak and Tui's only two that remain. Crashies with two with the darts, leaving Tui's by himself. He falls as NRG gets the pistol. There's a lot of layers into that pistol round that we just witnessed. No you saw already the mid, the mid or being conditioned to set up the mid splits later in the half, or maybe even trying to catch out aggression from loud top mid. But you saw Demon One flanking halls, Marv reflanking mid door. All these different layers make it nearly impossible for this retake to come through from loud. Hey, take a look at that first shock dart kill from Crashies, and then the second. Never mind. We got teased. <laughs> Back into the action energy with the gun advantage once more. Very reminiscent of what we saw in the first half. And not opting to use that mid orb this time. Just going for the straight up mid door orb. They don't want these guns to have close range angles. There's no point of putting that orb up and around like this. Yeah. You can tell perhaps paranoia or concern of a death ball that could be waiting on the other side. They're sending three up mid with the drone to pave the way. The dart invested as well. And they're going to get all this info. No one's been peeking them. If I'm Marv right here, I'm telling him, yo, D1, keep going. Keep going. I got your back, bro. He's going to see that knife soar across the sky. That's good info. Land beyond the site. Yeah, they're really, I mean, this has been a, a war of information. Really, in both halves. Mm -hmm. But so far, this bout is going in favor of NRG, as it should. Now, will Sadhawk pick somebody off here? Oh, he actually Five goes points. down the tube. There was the pickoff onto you. He jumped down. You rarely see that, I feel like. This is the 3v3 here. Yeah, they still have pistols, but they're making this costly. Demon 1 is so pushed up in the spawn. Once again, the late flank, this time courtesy of Victor's. QCK is waiting on the other oh, side, oh, unawares of the damage beneath them. Nice. Victor gets two. The Bulldog cleans him up. Now Les is left alone. Nothing but a classic in hand. The spike's been ticking for a little while. It's an inevitability. We're tied at seven.
Good damage from Loud. Massive damage, yeah. And they went into that like 3v3 retake with the notion of just trying to get guns out. They weren't actually trying to go for that whatsoever. They wanted to do as much damage as they possibly could. And I think they did a pretty good job of doing that. Headshot. Yeah, I would say <laughs> that, was, that was the player. He just pushes all the way to and just jumps down. What an animal. Yeah, I would say all, all things considered, mission accomplished. If damage was the intent, they did it again. And there's an AWP online right now from QCK. No armor to protect it. Knife tagging, what, three, four potentially early on? Sadak getting early info. It's very interesting that NRG decided to not fully invest into this round and just go for kind of like a light buy. Like they're really focused on setting up their economy and trying to get as many gun rounds as possible. And I kind of like that because when you have a gun in the hands of Demon 1, like anything is possible, right? right. Like, I mean, they've managed to get past a lot of Lex's utility here, and they still have the site. This is really good. The thing is, how do they dance around this? There's off in the hands of QCK. You mentioned at the beginning of the round, the dash at the ready, not used. Lex got tagged up to 18 HP. The only thing here is Palantine still has his dart. Now finally invested. It lights up backside, and Sadak and QCK pounce on it. The information revealing. Look at the minimap, Doug. The Viper Mollies are coming out from Marv. This is going to be impossible. QCK and Tui's left alone trying try to figure out how things have gone so sideways. Tui's there to deal with oh. things on his own, but time is just too short. And they made it work. NRG makes it work with a... I mean, not so light of a buy, but I mean, Marv had a ghost the yeah. entire time. Yeah. And he was just playing the Mollies. And they get the kill on Tui's. And everyone on the side of NRG, so close in terms of their scoreline. Well, and I think as we take a look at that round again, there were a couple of things key here. Yes, they managed to get out onto B. They did so without having to deal with any of the annoying Cypher yeah. utility. There's the Molly that you were referring to. Yep. But they did so with Guardians that they invested in the previous round. So it was a hefty investment on the front end, but it pays off in dividends. Yeah. And I like this from Demon 1. The Outlaw and the Anti-Eco. I'm a huge fan of this. And you just set up your money so oh. well. Yeah, it doesn't kill, hurt. But that's enough. All it takes is for you to just spit on him if you need to, and he's gonna go down. A warning shot. Look at the alts too, building up from NRG. You already have Yoru ult, you already have Sova ult. If you wanna invest that Cypher ult after you get a pick, you can as well. And this drone's gonna fish out oh, PCK for sure. Oh. But wait, oh no. He doesn't know. Finally drops oh, out so of the awkward. drone. I was worried here that Crashies were going to get caught. Marv was supposed to be the line of defense there. But a big kill from the jet. Mm -hmm. Wow. Less again. That's such a hard 1v1 to win if you're less with a deagle. It's just a pixel. Uh, sure. <laughs> That's all it takes. NRG left in tatters. Oh, no. It's just sheriffs. There was no investment oh, around no. this. And it's a thrifty round for Loud to tie us again. Oh no. Energy tried their best for that not to happen. You saw it. They tried to drone mid, but QCK found his timing. Swinging before the drone can see him, catching off guard, catching them off guard. And then still being so confident, he just sat there in the open. Oh, that's a crazy shot on Marv. I, it's filthy. And again, it was Marv who was supposed to be the protection for oh Crashies. What a shot. Unreal. Look at this. Yes, let's look at this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at it, now we're back into the action. Because of how they handled their money, NRG have enough to buy with Demon 1 with Blades. Free sight. And this time with the Yoru ult. A bunch of info gathered, a bunch of space taken. Ooh. And Kalanzin decapitated. A little bit of high ground found, but no target to speak of. Here we go again. Nice post plant. Victor's gonna get such a good timing here. And he lands the shots. And the ult. Where do they go from here? You start to see some of the flashes come through. Crashies. Right here. Trying to see if he can gain a tag. Dissuade and keep the defuse at bay. It's done. Yeah, it's over. They're calling to quits. Cutting their losses, tuck and tail and getting out. And that's a smart call from Loud because... I think so too. I mean, so many alts were invested into that round from NRG. 
and you were down 4v5, it just makes it nearly impossible, especially with Victor getting that kill. Ideally, you're keeping mid. weapons here. Woo. It's actually Victor who falls. Saving the op in this round is huge. Yeah. They managed to do so. Carry it out into the next as Loud calls a timeout. An economy is looking good from both teams right now, so it should be another full buy from both sides. And the success we've seen so far from NRG on this attacking half has been get the bomb down and play post plant. I mean, it's it's a simple concept, but it's so hard to pull off sometimes. And if you do it right, it could be the, like the most oppressive thing to play against. They're doing a really good job of identifying where Loud is playing retake in this half. So I was praising the IG yelling from Sadok, but actually Ethan having a really good read on how Loud is playing right now. Well, I think that's another thing. We, you know, we talked a little bit about this during kickoff and now an opportunity to revisit it. Ethan in the primary IGL role. Mm -hmm. And there were conversations around, would he be able to learn in time? Would he be able to adapt in time? How do those dynamics play out? Given that, yes, he was on a world championship winning roster, yeah. but it was Busio who was at the helm. Now the calling responsibilities and duties resting on the shoulder of Ethan. And yes, you've got Crashies and Victor who are so vocal when it comes to mid-rounding and contributing to the calling situation. There's plenty of help for Ethan, but I love that you're highlighting the calling of him because you're right, it's it's been very good. And it's not easy to call on a character like Yoru. I mean, I just gotta say it. It's so tough because you want to be taking a lot of engagements first. You want to be doing pop flash plays and you want to do TP plays too, but like at the same time, you're trying to mid-round for your team and like tell them where to go. It could be very, very hard. Oh, that was an early fight. Right into elbow. And QCK wins it out with the op. And now NRG left with a couple of decisions to make. Still have plenty of money. But they turn their attention towards A. Victor has gotten deep into halls already. A tap of the door. And you imagine the fight will ensue here in just a moment. Nice. There it is. Two East Falls with the help of the dart from Crashies. Sada oh. again doing it on his own. There, Marv was there to trade. I mean... KO just provides you so many individual playmaking opportunities. Planted. But a 3v3 now. He's Plays online for QCK as he goes up high, tries to find anything. He finds Demon 1. I thought it was going to be more of Dufalls oh. as QCK continues to push forward. Three on the round with the Blades and Victor left alone. Not going to find anything as Loud tie us up again. And it might seem like, why is Sadhawk doing that? Why not wait for the retake and have a 4v4? But just evening it out there, he has so much confidence that his team won the 3v3. That's why he goes for plays like that. And he does it like quite often, not only on maps like this. He does it on Vine, he does it on Ascent, where he's making plays like this. He's an animal. And then QCK, beautiful updraft. I think also the tracking through the wall on the Demon yeah. Line, because Marv was the one who was exposed when that kill went down. It's very impressive. Those little things that often kind of get lost in conversations of Jets. Yeah, and he's starting to wake up now. On that attacking half, you know, he started off like 0-4 or something. Mm -hmm. So bringing it back. It's the AWP found out. And he's been repositioning a lot with this AWP. I like when AWPers are mobile like this. It can, it can be so hard to tell where he is. Did he go B? Is he in mid now? He's at A. Ethan, Ethan might find out. <laughs> Suspicions confirmed. And yeah, he moves again. Now he's going to take the mid, <gasps> mid angle. Meanwhile, Demon One is trying to oh, get oh, the oh. best of Sadak and does. This would be huge. You're right. He's everywhere. Mm -hmm. No trip online now. That opens up a flank opportunity if this bomb goes down on A. That I might think, be what they're trying to do. I think that drone saw both in mid. Oh. Hey, perched this up. This is a dangerous game. And Marv knows. Look at him crouch. What a the flash. flash in the swing. Oh. And they read that like a book. That was so sick. I had questions of if they had the pop flashes. Ethan has them. Yep. Especially on the A site. A beautiful setup. Work still to be done. Slow trying to figure out go. Demon one caught knife out. Marv oh. snapping on the two. Three on the round. The four. Oh, 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 oh. As NR.
RG get to 10. Oh my gosh. I mean, he, you can tell he's been putting in the hours. Yeah, he looks so good. He's looking crispy. Headshot after headshot right there. Look at this flash. How does that angle even? I mean, I mean the fact that he knows that it's going to hit that exact angle where Kisuke is, is that's that's beautiful. That's the mark of someone who's that's played a, a lot of yours. That's a chef's kiss. Yeah, for real. That's someone who's put in the time. Energy hanging on to one round lead here. Op still in the hands of the defense. QCK, you mentioned he's been heating up. He's been very effective. Currently posted up in an aggressive line A. Yeah. And energy are certainly... They're waiting for him to peek into this, though. Well, they're not being quiet about how they're doing this, suggesting oh. that there are multiple people going down halls. I love what they've just done between Stop. the clone and Ethan going. It sounds like there are Clydesdales running down halls. It was all just a fake. So you manipulate the rotations towards A. Now you have a little bit of room yeah. to work B. And that's what you can do with this Yoru, the mind games. And they need to go now, Doug. Yeah. They're, they're going to miss their timing because... You're right. This is, this is taking too long. This window will shut. Less you. is already back. And the benefit is the Cypher utility should give you a little bit of room to work with. What a molly. Yeah, still traded one for one, though. Less with so much to do, tagging onto the first. He's swinging out from behind the wall. Crash is lit up. Crash is dead. Less continues to fight and continues to find value. And that timing window shut just when the moment was right. That's one of the things about Yoru that is so tough. It's that when you go for a fake play like that, you almost have to commit right away. Yeah. Or you just need to play the rest of the round slow because if you wait, if you have any type of hesitation on when you're running to the other side of the map, you see what happens, right? Les is able to come back into sight and you don't want a player like Les who Honestly, he's been kind of quiet since he had those 18 kills, but you don't want him to start getting heated up again. Wow. You saw him backside, holding everything down. Sadox ult also, you know, we didn't talk about that, but massive. It was yeah, it was it good. It was massive. <laughs> Sadox looking surprised. I, I love watching him play because he just looks so happy all the time. He's emotive. Order. Yeah, he's very emotive. He just, he just truly has a love for the game that I don't think a lot of players have. A stark contrast to the other side as Chet calls a timeout, often known for the stoic expression mm -hmm. that currently sits on his face. In honestly, highs and in lows, consistent. Yeah, honestly, all of NRG, from what I've seen so far, even when they've lost like that 1v3 or whatever, they've been so calm, like no reaction. Yep. I mean, you saw Marv get that nice 4K, and those are nice shots. Like, that feels good when, you, when you're in a game like that. You get a nice 4K like that, and you're just cold. Just another day. That's nice, man. Tied at 10 apiece. We'll see what things look like on the other side. It's timeout for NRG. Another light buy here. I mean, they don't really have a choice, I do mean, they? Give Demon, yeah, give him a yeah. gun. Yeah, please. <laughs> I was like, surely we're not going to let him just sit around with a Deagle. Which, by the way, he's amazing with, but... They've managed to buy around it a little bit. A stinger. <laughs> and if you're loud, you're like, you know, how many rounds have NRG had guns? Sorry, very quickly. It's not QCK with the op this time. It's Kalanzine. QCK falls. I believe you heard a shot rattle off too. And if there wasn't one before, there is one now. So they understand what's waiting for him on the other side. And off of that, energy, feeling of the pressure, feeling of the damage, make a quick turn over Instant to Instant reaction. Oh. But can they find the timing? Or will Tui's keep him at bay on his own? Not able to land the shots, not able to settle the crosshair. And it falls to threes. Loud, quick to rotate, now arriving Welcome at the scene. Now they're gonna have to deal with the pit. Cypher all does come out though. We've got a couple of options here on how they decide to play this, but there's no late flank. There's nothing like that crash. He's quietly creeping his way forward. Nice cover. And he's gone undetected, but he's on his own now. Less on the other side. He's been so good. Crash, he's with an opportunity to play. Spoiler! And he does. NRG take the lead back. Wow. And I was going to say in that retake, they knew where Crash was that whole time. I was going to say he needed to do some crazy heroics to win that round. But the fact that he just sat there, stayed alive, understanding that Marv has his back. It was honestly really well played from him. 
And I'm pretty sure Victor saw like a pixel of QCK on his cam there. I mean that collat. This this was almost the end. Had crash, he's shown up a second earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps doesn't go his way, but another timeout called the last one for either side. This time courtesy of Loud as energy hang on to one round lead. And this has been an incredible match so far. This is just map one too, man. Yeah, I mean, Marv is back in full effect. Demon one's doing demon one things. Ethan with the flashes, you know, I mean, it, it, energy looked good and Loud looked great as well. I think we we're getting what's expected out of Les, right? Yeah. He's gonna continue to pop off. He's gonna continue to do things that you wouldn't necessarily expect somehow surpassing expectations. And I think QCK also continues to grow into this role. That's that's been kind of put before him. And yeah, you know, there are conversations around, you don't replace, Os replace Ospas. And to a large degree, that's yeah. true, but you do need some firepower out of QCK. And so far he's delivered. Yeah, he's been playing pretty exceptional in this map so far. Another A side default from NRG. But they are going to dart top mid here. Get any info. Standing ahead. If there's a walk down or anything like that, and that dart not being broken gives them so much info. But what do they do with it? They're just going to farm the Sova ult. I think that's wise. Maybe you're going to see Crashies plant the bomb as well and just play a post plant scenario once more. Assuming he can get out. It's yeah. always such a barrage of bullets as soon as there's any yeah. tap. And they're so confident that this was a retake setup. They just committed on that TP. And he gets punished for it. But the trades! He should have the ult online now. Crash, he's committing to the plant. That Molly oh! just a little wide. <laughs> Spike has been playing it. Sonic and Lice left alone. Still so hard to win. A rare miss. That's Again, the opening, though. Buzzing his ear. The dash across. What a great reposition. Marv still has a spit, and he's on a late reflank through mid. As the wall goes up, uh -oh. the setup was there, and Sonic gets both. Oh my gosh. It's all under Marv now. A 1v1, and it's this time in favor of Marv. The Red Bull Clutch for NRG. The Iceman back at it again. And I think worth mentioning how many times did we have conversations at the beginning of the map. Everything was going in favor of Loud. Those big moments yeah. turning in favor of NRG in the closing moments of this map. And boy, it was still off of heroics from Loud. Sadak with two enormous kills. This was the pistol round strap, by the way. I want to point that out. The, the halls lurk, the reflank around in mid to secure the dub. No time to think things over. No timeouts to use. Back into the action. The NRG on map point. It's and outlaw and now blades for it, Demon 1. And, and if Demon 1 finds QCK, Sadhok, or less, it's an insta one shot in the body. Abusing the power of the outlaw. And yeah, they got ecoed last time. <laughs> he ran it, but I don't think that's going to happen again here, Doug. This is this is going to be very hard for Loud. This map potentially ends on B. Les has a deagle. It's like, again, it's like, why not give him the rifle? He's been popping off the whole game. He's got Sada close by. One point away from his ult. And we know how devastating Good of an ult that can be. That knife tags a couple. No it didn't way. tag everyone, Hold though. On. And now his ult. Demon 1 going oh up my top. Gosh. The Hunter's Fury down low and Les finding value once more. But he can't find anything else. The benefit for Loud here is that it's a 3v3 and the three that remain are rifles. Kao and Zine, they might not know he's here. Spike planted. And he's creeping up on this pillar area. QCK not far behind. Oh Far playing behind the wall as Victor's oh left. Knife out. I now Alex got it. A 2v2 now. Two is, is going to have to do it on his own. A 1v2. Do they know where he is? The drone's gonna tag him. Oh. He has no idea that Marv's waiting on the other side too. He's gonna tag him again. What a miserable feeling. Oh. No good yeah. options. Time is of the Toxin essence. And there's really nothing he can do. Two is just kind of forced to play this out. This feels like torture. Oh, this right. feels cruel. Oh. He's gotten it down to one. Crashies with the dart. Crashies with the swing. And it's all a game now. He's gonna get the kill, but the map goes in favor of NRG.
What an attack he had. Just breaking down Loud's defense piece by piece. It was really nice to watch. And we were we were questioning it, you know, like, well, how would this roster be with a little bit more time? They look great on this map. But I think worth mentioning too, we had so many conversations around Ethan and his pop flash abilities and how he's gonna be able to set up his team. And yeah. we had we had plenty of, of theories, right? We speculated plenty on how that would play out. I've got to point out, they did that in ways that neither of us expected, yeah. right? They, they did it in a, their own unique way, and that's been yeah. the NRG mantra from day one. It was, it was really pleasurable to watch this match. Even from just the pistol round, Marv had such a great map. And Last big play. props to NRG for one like enemy. not letting this game slip away from their grasp, because at one point of this map, it looked like Les was just going to absolutely roll them. Like, at, 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 a, at a point, he was just running in a sight solo, taking out two, three players. I believe he had 18 uh, kills yeah. at half. Yeah. 18, if I'm not mistaken, ends with 25. First map goes in favor of NRG. We've got plenty more to go. We'll see you guys on the other side.